the Avalon is out and the Crown is in. This is Toyota's new big, comfy, and feature-rich sedan. And should you get this over the Camry or the Avalon, we're gonna take a full detailed look at the exterior, the interior, and get it out on the road for a test drive. All right, y'all, let's take a look at the exterior details of this brand new Crown. So first of all, starting with the trim levels, we've got the XLE, the Limited, and the Platinum. And the Platinum is what we have right here. And the biggest difference between a couple of these is the powertrain which we'll talk about. So starting right up front, Toyota gives us the typical massive lower grille. I think this one looks better than some of the other crowns I've seen because of this two-tone paint scheme, but it's just massive down there. I mean, it is just solid and it's just a huge bug barrier when you're driving. So that's just one thing. You're gonna get LED headlight standard. We've got this LED blinker here. The quad LED headlight that you see right there is on the limited and platinum only, but you'll get LEDs no matter what. They'll just look a little bit different. Now the paint on this one is the supersonic red. It's a two-tone paint, as you can tell. You've got that black hood, you've got black side body right there. We also get anywhere from 19 to 21 inch wheels, and this model comes standard with 21 inch wheels. Maybe it affects the ride quality. We'll talk about that in the test drive, but look at the overall design of this car. It is really wicked. It's a mix of almost like a hatchback, a lifted small SUV type thing, a sports car. It's just a wide variety. And that's what Toyota was going for was something unique and totally different. On the side body, you're gonna get turn signals standard in these mirror. They also power fold. They're also heated. You've got blind spot monitors in them as well. Dimensionally, this is 196 inches long. So it is the same dimensions as the outgoing Avalon, a little bit, few inches bigger than the Toyota Camry. And it's got 5.8 inches of ground clearance. You lift it a little bit higher. That's still just a tad more than what the Camry and the Avalon are as well. Coming to the back, you've got a massive light bar back here. LED taillights are gonna be standard crown written across the back the platinum badge hybrid max badge and it looks like kind of a hatchback but it's just your regular old trunk now let's take a look at the cargo area now i gotta say i was expecting to have a power trunk at least a button that you can press and the whole thing opens up all the way or foot activated but it's not you just have this little button right there and it just unlocks the trunk or basically unlatches it so a little disappointing for a $55,000 car, but that's just me. I personally honestly don't care myself. I was just expecting it. But the cargo space back here also is a little bit disappointing. So this is bigger than the Camry dimensionally, but it's only 0.1 cubic feet bigger in terms of space. When you get a big car, you expect big space. And this is still a very spacious trunk. It's 15.2 cubic feet. The Camry does a great job with its trunk as well but I was expecting it to be a little bit bigger. Now, you can see it's really wide, it's really deep, it's also tall, so you've got great space right there. And the other thing is that standard, Toyota gives you a spare tire. I'm really happy to see that. The only thing I guess I could complain about is that there are no like grocery bag, dedicated grocery bag hooks back here. Now, Toyota gives us the smart key as standard, and this is your key fob. It does feel very plasticky, but these, from what I've learned, these Toyota key fobs seem to be very durable. It's got crown written in the back of it, and no remote start button, but if you three press the lock button, lock, 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 and hold it on the third one, it will remote start. So the smart key system is standard on the front doors, but if you get the limited or the platinum, you will also get the smart key system on the back doors. So both front and back doors have these little lines to lock it that will make the mirrors power fold. You've got sensors in the back to unlock it. And then if we take a look at these front seats, depending on the trim, the seats are gonna vary a little bit. This being the Platinum, we get full on leather. The Limited also gets leather. The XLE is gonna give us their fabric and soft tech seats, so a synthetic leather but they're all going to come with the same power adjustment. You've got two-way lumbar support on the right, your typical height and tilt adjustment there as well. I have been quite comfortable in these seats. I've put a good amount of time and miles on here. These bolsters are good size and also quite soft. We've got perforations in here. You've got a little 
extra two-tone action going on. And unlike the Avalon, which I complained about, their headrest was too far forward. These ones don't seem to have that problem and everything is just quite comfortable right here. Heated seats are going to be standard. If you want ventilated seats, you'll have to get the Limited or the Platinum model. And the steering wheel is going to be leather wrapped no matter what, but it's going to be heated on this Platinum model. So heated steering wheel, heated seat, ventilated seat as well. Over on the door, we also get memory settings for the driver's side. So you've got your two position memory settings. And then when you start the car, push button start right there. Seat will automatically move to where you want it with memory settings. Now, as we hop into the back seat, the first thing I want to mention is that as it should be on a $55,000 car, you've got nice materials on the door right here. You've got a really large bottle holder down there as well. And being a large car, it should have good space. It looks like it's got good space. We'll hop in and take a look. So sitting behind myself, this is where I like to have the seat at five foot nine. I've got the seat kind of low where I like it in this car and that really squeezes my foot space. But there's a lot of available knee space, which is excellent. There is a hump in the middle. It's not massive though. Someone could still sit here. And at least these backseat passengers get air conditioning vents and a couple of USB charging ports. And both seats actually get map pockets on the back of them as well. Right in the middle, we've got this fold down armrest, which is nice and soft. Open that up and then you've got your cup holders, which are maybe a little bit larger than your typical rear cup holders. Sitting in the back, we get to take a look at this panoramic view. So that looks pretty nice. And these seats are comfortable. They're nice and soft. They're almost bucket-like as well, so it feels good to sit back here. And I can sit up tall without my head touching, even though it is close with my hat on, you can still fit back here. So for a family, this is, this is pretty good size. Now looking further at the interior here, armrest is really nice and soft. You got a good solid grab handle. All of this is soft up here as well, so if you like to rest your arm up there, it is soft. You've got a small storage area, but a pretty large circumference, a large diameter bottle holder. Let's give it a shot. So the biggest thing here is that we don't have the height available, but this can actually sit in there and probably be okay, but not quite as much height as some vehicles. Now, just in here, typical Toyota, you've got your dedicated trip or odometer button, your brightness control right there. And then separate is to open up your trunk or your fuel door. And then up there is your wiper de-icer and your automatic high beams. One thing different with this steering wheel on the Platinum compared to the rest of them is the Platinum gives us these paddle shifters. So the rest of the trims, XLE and Limited, do not. But the controls on here are going to be the same. Another thing is that rain sensing windshield wipers, you see the auto right there. That means you have rain sensing wipers. You don't even have to adjust your wipers if you don't want to. That is standard on every single trim. The other thing standard on every single trim is this foot long or foot size 12 inch information display in front of us. So the way it works is I don't like it as much as some of Toyota's older systems. It still looks nice. It's very clear. It's easy to see, but I don't, don't like the customization on here. Um, you, you can kind of change to a certain degree what all you see in each section and you can have three different screens, but there's not as much information, I guess, as far as a trip computer stuff as some of the older vehicles like a trip A, trip B that you can easily get back and forth between to see your MPG in different trips, but that's just me. It's a small complaint, but you can kind of customize it the way you want to. Another thing is, even standard on our Platinum, we don't have a head-up display. That is not a standard feature. And this is a $55,000 car. I'm being a little, little harsh here, but I was expecting that. But you get a large display over here, and this is standard on every trim as well. Takes up pretty much this whole section, and it is a touchscreen. We get wireless, Apple CarPlay, and wireless Android Auto. It integrates well in here. I've got no complaints with that. And with it being wireless, it's also nice because we have a wireless charging tray as standard. So you can just drop your phone in there and it'll charge. It holds it nice and, nice and tight. It's out of sight, out of mind. And there's still maybe even room for your sunglasses or a key or something in there too. Now more on this screen, a six speaker system is standard 
on the base model, but the next two trims are gonna give you an 11 speaker Bose sound system. The Bose sound system usually, or not Bose, excuse me, JBL, it's a JBL sound system. I don't know why I said Bose, it's always JBL in Toyota and it sounds nice. Their software right here is something similar to what we've seen in the latest models and Lexus models. There's a lot of things that you can customize on here once you get into your settings, as you can see this right here. Um, it's pretty simple to use. It's maybe not most people's favorite, but I like it for the most part and I've got no complaints as far as that goes. Now, if we put it in reverse, one thing that we get um, optional on the limited model, but standard here is this 360 camera. So this is in reverse. We've got dynamic backup lines. You've got a 360 panoramic view. You can also tap on the screen and see closer to the vehicle. It's not quite as detailed as some where you can literally like see the tires. You can see kind of an angled view, but it still helps and it's nice to have this available. If you want to quickly access that camera, you can also do it by pushing that button right there. And if we are in gear, we have our own parking assist as well. So it can parallel or perpendicular park for you, which is really nice. Another thing that just kind of puts it over the top at this $55,000 price. Down here, we've got dual zone climate control. I like this layout from Toyota. Everything is sleek, but it has dedicated buttons and dedicated features. Your heated and ventilated seat buttons are over here. Auto mode for your auto climate control. You can change you know, temperatures between the two of you if you want to, or press that to sync them back up. It's very simple to use and I like it. It's one concealed feature right here is that this is the heated steering wheel tab. So there's a little steering wheel icon right there. It's on auto right now, so your steering wheel can automatically be heated on cooler days if needed, or you can have it manually there as well. This is where you adjust your fan speed up or down. These toggles go up or down, or just put it in automatic mode. Now back from there, unlike most Toyotas, you get a storage area right up there, but there's nothing there because we have our wireless charging tray right here. You've got a couple of USB-C charging ports and an extra little spot right there for storage. Then you have two cup holders right behind that. I've got no complaints with these cup holders, except if you have stuff in here, it can be a little tricky to grab anything out of there. So I really just keep a set of keys down there and that's about it, or my sunglasses, because uh, we don't actually have a sunglass holder in here. Maybe it's just with this panoramic roof, but no sunglass holder. And then back down here, the shifter is unique. So you just move it over and then down for drive, over, up for reverse, or when you're in drive, if you go down, it'll put you in manual mode where you can use your paddle shifters. You can use those anytime though, if you want to. The drive modes right here, we've got quite a few drive modes. I'll talk about that in the test drive, but let me show you. So right now you can see green writing comfort. We also have eco mode. You've got normal mode, sport, sport S and custom. And we'll talk about those in the test drive and whether or not there's much of a difference or not. Another thing to pay attention to, which I'll talk about in the test drive, the little EV icon. That means we are in pure electric mode. Gas engine is not running. That will toggle on and off. And again, I'll talk about that more in the test drive. And it's still very similar to other Toyota setups. We have a brake hold, electronic parking brake, and our traction control right here. And this armrest is nice and soft. I like this whole layout for the most part. Lift this up. There's a regular USB charging port in there. There's a sliding tray right here and enough room for a good amount of stuff in here with a soft liner. There's also one 12 volt power outlet in there too. Toyota also gives us a locking glove box, but it is tiny. I mean, it is like basically just enough for your manual and that's about it. An auto dimming mirror with garage controls. That's standard on all trims. LED interior lighting is also standard. And then one thing that we have that you saw in the back seat is the panoramic roof, which is on the limited and platinum, just not the XLE. Now, let's see if Toyota's got the sliding visor. And yes, they do. So that is good to see. Might be curious, how's the visibility out of here? Well, what do you think? It's actually not bad. 
Now for the powertrain, this is where things really change and stand out compared to the Avalon. There are two hybrid options. There's no more Avalon V6, and the biggest difference over the Avalon and the Camry is the specific powertrain we have in this one. With the base models, the XLE and the Limited get a 2.5 liter four cylinder hybrid with the nickel metal hydride battery and 236 horsepower. That can get 41 MPG combined, and then this hybrid max model is on the Platinum, which is their 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder with a nickel metal hydride battery and 340 horsepower. Both of these power plants are all wheel drive as standard, but this Platinum hybrid max model gets 30 MPG combined. All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Crown hybrid max. And one thing that differentiates this from the other crown trim levels is that this has an adaptive variable suspension so you can control how comfortable or how firm the suspension is with your test drive and we'll talk about that or with your drive modes and we'll talk about that in just a bit another thing to note is that all of these crown models come standard with the toyota safety sense 3.0 that's going to be your radar cruise control, your lane keeping system, lane centering technology, automatic emergency braking, which can all be customized. And it all works really, really well. Um, all of it is controlled basically um, on your steering wheel for your radar cruise and your lane keeping system. And it's pretty simple. I like it. Um, I've had no problems with it. Another thing is that it has proactive driving assist, which you can turn off or on in your settings. But basically what that means is it's almost like radar cruise control is on all the time a little bit to where without being in cruise if you're just cruising through town and there's someone in front of you that slows down quickly this will also slow down too to try to keep some distance it's just more proactive for you while you're driving whether you're not it, it takes some getting used to honestly the first time you get on here and if it's on and it slows down for you you're like whoa what's going on it's it's once you get used to it and you kind of know what to expect it uh it works pretty smooth the other thing is got my blinker on right when you have cruise going you can have this change lanes for you it's lane change assist we've got it on this platinum model i believe it's also optional on the limited model now starting from a stop here we started out in ev mode when you come to a stop and you're sitting still generally it will be in just electric mode the gas engine doesn't have to run and i just let off the accelerator vehicles in front of me the car kind of slowed down on its own with the proactive driving and went into ev mode engines back on because i'm accelerating so with the hybrid powertrain it is not a plug-in hybrid there's no charging it's all self-contained self-sustaining with its charge and just like other toyota hybrids it's going to be electric assist. So you'll get some electric power, majority gas power, and it works very smooth. There's not a lot of shifting or clunking or, or noticeable jerking like there is in some. I just recently had the Toyota Tacoma and that had a more pronounced change between EV mode and hybrid or gas mode. Uh, but this one's been very smooth, just like other Toyota models. Now, one thing that this car stands out with is the ride comfort absolutely it's fantastic i haven't driven the new camry but compared to the previous even avalon and camry i think this has a superb ride comfort now we're just in uh, normal drive mode i'm gonna put the pedal down and those 340 horses come out very quick the thing with electric power here or partial electric power in the hybrid is that it's very re quick to respond you get some power pretty much immediately and that's just in normal mode you can toggle between all your drive modes pretty easily if you go to eco it's going to try to keep you more in ev mode and dull your throttle response a little bit uh, your car can even give you a screen where it will give you a score and tell you just how good you've been at your starting your cruising or your stopping but i'm going to go back into comfort mode now so the thing is, with comfort mode, it's not just a name. It actually softens your suspension. So if you want to cruise riding on a sofa, put it in comfort mode, and the ride comfort is, it's fantastic. It really, really is. 
Then if you go up to normal, everything's going to be your standard. Go to sport and then your powertrain, your responsiveness of your shifting is going to be faster, quicker, more responsive. If you go up one more to sport plus, then you're going to get the powertrain responsiveness, but also a firmer suspension with this adaptive suspension. It's so quick. That is one thing about this. If you miss the V6, this is very quick, but more efficient. So there's a little bit of a trade off there. You don't get the six cylinders, but you get a very responsive and quick powertrain that can also be efficient. Just partial pedal. I mean, it's effortless driving with this. That's for sure. I'm gonna go back to uh, comfort mode here. And the one thing that we're missing here is a pure EV mode, which is very limited in this, these hybrids anyways. But some of the older Toyota hybrids have an EV button to where if you're low speeds and you wanna make sure that you stay in EV mode, you can if you don't go over a certain speed or push the throttle too much. But in this car, you know, you don't have that. You just don't even really have to think about the drive mode or anything. Toyota just made this a very nice to drive car. Super comfortable. It handles pretty well still for being as comfortable as it is. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if those lower trims like the XLE with 19 inch wheels is even more comfortable because it's going to have smaller wheels, a little bit more rubber on those tires and not quite so jarring but we're in ev mode now it was totally seamless with the gas engine shutting off it's a fairly quiet vehicle but one other thing that's missing is laminated glass the noise has still been good in here but fifty-five thousand dollars should give us some laminated glass but overall on this test drive ergonomics are good in here it's easy to see this What's comfortable over here, all the controls are within an easy reach. The screen is easy to touch as well. It's not a super long reach. So I really do enjoy driving this Toyota Crown. So to wrap things up, this Crown gets very expensive, but it really stands out with its all new powertrain compared to what the Camry has and the Avalon did not have. It's very efficient no matter which trim level you get. And it's got great power and pep at this model with a bunch of features. But if you were expecting something big and spacious, it's big, but it's not as spacious as you'd expect, although it is still a fantastic overall sedan. Leave your thoughts down below, and I hope you enjoyed the video.